you here to advance them. Um, they're not along with mine, you're gone. Uh, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Chair, I want to speak to the amendment in the name of the Honourable Nick Smith, which uh, essentially deals with uh, the parameters that might go around the interesting word in this bill, integrity. And you can't, I think, Mr Speaker, or I can't speak about that without reflecting on the moments where past members in this House have exercised uh, what, what the, a, a, or made a decision about their future based on their integrity, based on what they see as the core in the relationship between the people who elected them uh, and their own uh, views on things. And the first uh, uh, member I want to talk about is someone who I've uh, studied from his, an historic point of view, um, because I certainly wasn't around at the time, uh, is uh, John A. Lee. Now, he was a World War II, World War I hero, lost an arm, uh, got the Distinguished uh, uh, Service Medal, and was a stalwart a very strong stalwart for the Labour Party. But he was considered by some in the Labour Party to be too Marxist, Marxist in his views. And he clashed throughout his uh, time in the Labour Party with, Michael Savage, with Joseph Savage. The two of them couldn't see eye to eye on anything. And ultimately, uh, he was suspended from the Labour Party and, uh, and then, of course, uh, set up the Democratic Labour Party after that. Now, in that circumstance, it would have, in the, had this bill prevailed, then the leader of the party, who was incredibly popular, it would have had no trouble amassing the 66 per cent of votes or two thirds of caucus votes required to back him, could have had John A. Lee drummed out of Parliament uh, and a by election created in his uh, electorate. The same is true of Sir Leslie Munro who was a National Party member, a very distinguished gentleman, uh, had a, a, a diplomatic career uh, that is, is well, well understood by many who follow United Nations politics, for example. He came into this parliament but clashed with Sir Keith Holyoke and clashed with Sir Jack Marshall. And so he never made the ministerial rank, but he never stopped having views that he thought represented the people who elected him in his electorate. And he demonstrated his integrity and commitment uh, uh, to that uh, uh, set of principles throughout his career. But in this, had this bill prevailed, then he, as someone who was uh, a, a considered a troublemaker inside the National Caucus, someone who crossed the House, actually, and voted with the uh, uh, government in the, the uh, uh, would have been between uh, 57 and 60. Uh, he, or actually, my apologies, it was later than that. We, the National Party was in government, he voted with the opposition. And uh, he would have simply uh, been put through this process and shuffled out the door. Sorry to interrupt the member, but if he'd yeah. like to, in the last uh, one and a half minutes, relate those stories, to the definition of integrity. Well, perhaps the, minister, the member in the chair, uh, who is only a member of this House but for an hour sits in the chair presiding over it, was prepared to listen. He would have heard me mention integrity on numerous occasions and provide examples to the House of how past members have shown a great deal of integrity in respecting the will of their voters. And that's the problem here today. We know the jackboot's on. We know the government wants the bill off the table out of the parliament as quickly as possible so that they can appease Winston Peters and they've got the whole system working for them. It just in actually better than any other demonstration we could have had shows how little integrity is being shown by the government and frankly the presiding officers in this particular debate. It is an utter disgrace that I should have even been questioned on that point of view. So I want to go one further. Then there's the case of Jim Anderton. Now, Jim Anderton's a man whose politics I did not agree with, but over my time in Parliament I came to respect him enormously, and uh, I think he is a great loss to our wider community. But he was a man who did not like Roger Nomics. 
He did not like what the leadership of the Labour Party were doing. And so he stood on his principles. He showed his integrity and he left the Labour Party. Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman. Uh, before I give the next call, I'll wait until the member finished his, his uh, contribution. We are debating use new clause 3A on the definition of integrity, and if members are not going to be relevant to that, to that clause, then the, the chair, whoever's in the chair, will be obliged to take and accept the closure motion. I call a uh, point of order the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, I, I don't think it is, Mr Chairman, I don't think it is at all possible to uh, speak to the definition of integrity without giving some examples of how people have acted with a great deal of integrity during their parliamentary career. And uh, it, the fact is, we only get these five-minute calls. Uh, so far today, I haven't seen anyone given an extension on their five minutes, uh, apart from where one member was interrupted uh, by the chair. And I think uh, in that event, then maybe for the flow and follow of an argument, it's not unreasonable that most of that time might be taken up by giving examples of integrity. I did just that. I named four members of parliament who are well known historically for having demonstrated high levels of integrity who frankly would have been slung out of this parliament had this law been in existence uh, at that time. I thank the member, but I have made that ruling. Uh, and as I said, I encourage members. It is quite a narrow debate on the new clause 3A on the definition of integrity. <laughs> um, I call Simon O'Connor. I seem to have disappointed a number of my uh, colleagues, but 